Okay, before I start today's Retro Bat and PSP mini setup guide for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming Retro Emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, plus it really helps out my channel too, for which I'm always really grateful. So just recently, I've had a few people asking me how to add PSP mini games into Retro Bat. So obviously, I thought, well, it can't be that simple. It's something I've never covered before because I just assumed it was a very simple thing to do. And it is. It's very simple. I actually uploaded a PSP, PPS, SPP, Retrobat setup guide around a year ago. And anyways, let's get on with this. So uh, PSP mini games. obviously you would have bought these from the online store through the PSP uh, back in the day. Uh, the files being accepted here, in my case, are .cso files, and they work really well. I've already tested this out before doing this video. All I need to do to add PSP mini games is right click on the Retrobat shortcut, open file location, and it's literally just a case of putting your .cso games or your PSP mini games inside of your PSP folder. So I'm thinking as of now whilst doing this, uh, I think people are assuming that it doesn't accept PSP mini games because there isn't a PSP mini folder. Uh, so as it stands, Retrobat doesn't have one of those, but it has a PSP folder. Now, you could technically create your own through the ES configuration file, which I don't recommend, and even the developers of Retrobat don't recommend doing that, and it's not something I'm willing to do at all. Uh, the reason being is because by messing around with files, editing files, uh, for people who's not too sure, too confident, you can literally mess up everything. So I totally don't recommend doing that. So we put our games in the PSP folder. Let's just open up Retrobat. Okay, so straight away we can see PSP. So let's go inside here. Here's the games. Let's scrape some artwork, main menu, scraper, uh, scraper settings. I've got everything in place, in, including my screen scraper login details. Let's just scrape these games. Okay, game settings, and we're going to go to update game list. Yes. Okay, so here's the artwork for my games. They clearly don't say they're PSP mini games. If that's a part of your frustration, there is potentially a way to change the artwork on these. If I hold onto the A button, and go down to scrape i can get different options here for different artwork so example this game i've got just here we've obviously got the artwork being scraped from the game's database which has ps minutes on it so i could use that one if i press my a button to select it here we go i've now got ps minutes if I go over to Angry Birds and hold on to the A button, again, I'm going to go to Scrape and we'll see what this has got. Uh, so in Angry Birds case, we don't actually have artwork for this game saying PSP Minis. Uh, the only way around to do this, to filter out your mini games and your PSP games, is just downloading the artwork manually and popping it inside of your PSP ROMs folder, inside your images folder. As long as the game title is named the same as the artwork itself, it should be fine. So anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is press select on my controller, advanced system options, emulator. Now we got PPSSPP just here, which is the standalone emulator, or we can go for Libretro RetroArch Core PPSSPP. Uh, personally, I think they're both as good as each other. If I just leave this to auto and use PPSSPP, if we open up one of the games, Angry Birds. So we need to install this, so just press yes. And here we go, so I'm going to just press my A button.
Okay, so as we can see, that's working really well. And if I press select button again, advanced system options, we of course can increase internal resolution. Bump this up to say 1080p and that should work fine. I also noticed some screen tear, so just make sure vertical sync is turned to auto or yes. Aspect ratio looks good enough to me as it was. It looks like it's being displayed in 16 by 9. We also got shader sets here to use and we got the usual video settings here to enhance how things look. Now, if you don't see any visuals, drivers, video, and try a different driver just here, video driver that is. Now, if I was to use the Retro Arch Core, go to Advanced System Options, Emulator, Libretro, I'll likely get the same performance using the Libretro Core as well as the PPSSPP standalone emulator, which I've just downloaded. So, of course, for each one of these, I also need to go through the video settings again. So, game aspect ratio, I'm going to actually put this to 16 by 9. Decorations, I'm going to actually put on default unglazed. Uh, shader set, I've got some Dumont bezel projects here, which I've downloaded. Uh, and we also got internal resolution. So, let's see what this looks like on four times. If we go back into one of these games, let's just go for Angry Birds again. Okay, because I've selected the wrong aspect ratio, obviously most of the gameplay is gone from there. So because I'm using the decoration, I need to actually go back to game aspect ratio. Now, if I select game aspect ratio to custom and open up, say, Angry Birds again, this should now be displayed in the correct ratio for this decoration. As you can see, we've now got all the information on the screen. So as we can see, that looks pretty awesome now. And I'm also going to try out the 2D Adventures game. Okay, so how about DLC? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to actually add DLC. So if I just exit out of Retrobat, main menu quit, what we're actually going to do then is look in the actual folders for Retrobat to add DLC. So what I need to do then is go to my Retrobat shortcut, right click, open file location. Okay, so we're gonna go inside of the emulators folder. And in here, we're gonna find a PPSSPP folder. If I just go inside of this one, we're going to find a mem stick folder, which is your memory stick. And in here, we're going to go into the PSP folder and inside of the game folder. And generally, this is where your DLC is going to go for the PPSSPP standalone emulator. Now, for Libretro DLC, what we're going to do is come out of here. And we're going to go into the saves folder this time. And in saves, we're going to find PSP. And inside of here, we're going to go inside of the PSP folder. Now, there should be a game folder in here. If there isn't one like there isn't for me, just create new folder, right click, new folder, and call this folder game. Once you've created this folder, then it's inside of this folder, which is where your DLC is going to go if you're using RetroArch Libretro PPSSPP. Okay, so that's it for today's Retrobat and PSP mini setup guide. I also added how to add DLC in there, just because I could really. <laughs> so I'm really unsure why people would find that tricky, but there's obviously something some people out there is doing wrong, and I just thought I'd do a video 
just to show you how easy it is really so anyways if you liked today's video hit notification subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel just jamie also remember i got a massive playlist in fact i got two dedicated retro bat playlists amongst other front-ended standalone emulators that i cover here on my channel also join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok and lastly just remember my caution and the development team beyond retro bat don't mess around with your es configs file otherwise you will likely destroy retro bat and you might lose a lot of important stuff anyways until next time stay retro